another uh, quick Bashar SDA video. Um, I uh, wanted to show this uh, interesting variable frequency thing happening in the coil. Um, and so uh, I found an, a, a Super Jewel Thief circuit on, the, on uh, YouTube that other people are experimenting with. And what's interesting about it is you only need an inductor. You don't need a one-to-one -one transformer to uh, run your LEDs. But what you do need is two transistors, a PMP and an MPN, so that the, those produce the uh, the 180 phase shift to support um, oscillation. You need a capacitor. Um, you need, and I put a variable resistor here so I could uh, kind of tune in based on whatever this voltage is. The uh, the place where um, the LEDs come on, or you can basically adjust frequency that way by varying varying the voltage across here. Um, if you put a scope across here, I can show you and and remove the LEDs. I can show you uh, this variable frequency thing that the coil picks up. Oh, this capacitance that I'm using here is uh, um, 2.7 nanofarads and my coil is roughly 1.35 millihenries. So here's the circuit on the uh, prototype board. There's two transistors, one here. This is the PNP, this is the NPN. I've got a variable resistor it's hooked up to the Bashar STA. Um, I can um, hook it across the LEDs. These are uh, green LEDs that are that kind of need a high voltage to uh, to light, and I have two of them in series. So there is a high voltage here created by this one and a half volt battery. Um, you'll notice that when I touch the battery, uh, the lights go out. So um, apparently, like a metal surface uh, alters the capacitance quite a bit. Um, let me hook this back up to the scope. Okay, so I wanted to show you this. Um, this is like the underlying uh, oscillation um, with the scope set to um, one microsecond. I'm sorry, one millisecond per division. Uh, so we're kind of watching um, a blurring of all the high f uh, of, the, of these waveforms. Now, when I hook up the uh, the plate antenna, which is this thing, um, to the coil, the, the the capacitance changes, and we can see um, these higher radiant spikes. Let me turn up the intensity here a little bit. And these higher radiant spikes are kind of above that baseline uh, oscillation. And they are very jittery. And th today is kind of a um, lot of high winds, kind of a magnetic storm kind of day, creating a lot of jitter in the, in the, in the frequencies. The, the amplitudes also go up and down. So uh, if there was a circuit that could pick up these frequency shift shifts and uh, translate them into uh, um, an another waveform, uh, sort of like FM radio, um, then I think that would be a one way of tapping into the uh, energy that's coming coming through here. So basically, we're we're oscillating the coil, but then then it's being buffeted by um, magnetic fields.
lots of instability there. Now notice uh, if I take off the antenna, we drop down to the baseline uh, oscillation. Um, there's jitter there too, but not as intense when I, as when I hook up the antenna. Um, I can adjust the frequency and show that. So this is the frequency changing from that variable resistor. We can keep going higher. So this is without, without the antenna attached. Very high spikes. 10 volts per division. One, two, three and a half. 35 volts. 35 volt spikes across the coil. Very jittery. Now I'm going to add, going to add the antenna back. And maybe possibly dial in a different place. There's certain values of resistance that will make this thing jitter like crazy. But the one problem is my with my hand on the pot, it kind of changes the... There we go, there's... So, and... You know, I, I can hear a correlation between the wind outside and some of the movement here. This is a challenge uh, for using an oscilloscope because there's the, the notion of triggering is very difficult. With, with all this jitter. There we go. Now one thing I, one thing I can do is I can switch to uh, a 6 volt power supply. These transistors can handle that uh, but they do start to get warm. Even with the uh, one point 5 volt battery, they got warm. So with uh, more current, more power, the, buff the uh, buffeting around is much more intense, which points to, you know, by creating a, a more intense uh, magnetic field here, uh, pulsing regularly, it is more sensitive to the, the buffeting pressure. Yeah, that's getting hot. I gotta remove power here. I probably need even bigger uh, transistors here, ones that can handle more current if I'm going to use uh, 6 volts or even 12 volts. Um, so I was thinking a 2N3055 and the PMP equivalent of, uh, of that and going to a higher voltage. And that would create a lot more current in here and then it might be even more sensitive.